Hello and welcome back to the seminar. So next we'll be discussing esports in the curriculum, and uh, for the presenter is here, uh, Jens Brenbach. Welcome. Hello, I'm Jens. Clap a bit harder, it, so it seems like it's more people than there actually are. Yeah, I can't see how many you are because I get it in the light in my face. Yes, uh, my name is Jens Brembach. I represent Practicum, which is a vocational college in Helsinki. Uh, we're the first Finnish school institution to have esports in the curriculum. Of course, this might seem weird that are we playing video games uh, during school hours which is, I want to make clear in the beginning, that we don't play during, during uh, lecture, uh, lectures or anything like that. The idea of the program actually came from our students when we asked them, what do you want for your extra credits in curriculum? What would you prefer to have? And, and they suggested the esports, and we started to, to consider this as a, as, as a viable option and what would be the perfect things or the right ways to, to implement this because of course we can't give study credits to people for playing Counter-Strike or League of Legends because there's no educational value in it. So then we started thinking about how it is with values inside esports, what's the health issues, uh, cooperation and all these things to, to try and develop a a system how we can uh, improve on one hand the well-being of the students which is of course a pri priority for us as a, as a educational institution uh, how can we change the attitudes uh, towards esports is one general problem is that people tend to think that uh, gamers that they only only play video games and it's uh, it's seen as a negative trait or, or all, all over when it's still research that you can actually develop other skills in, inside games that can be beneficial in your general life. Of course, it, uh, games can also be overwhelming uh, for the general life that you play for six hours, eight hours, ten hours uh, during a day. And that means if you have eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work and studies, and then you end, end up with eight hours of gaming, it doesn't really work and you don't have a balanced life. And these are the issues also that we discuss with our students uh, within the curriculum of the esports. So it, it's a lot about how do you sleep? How do you move? How, how is your, are you hydrated while you play? Do you drink energy drinks? Because all of these things affect the human being in ways that are not only negative to your general life in your studies, your sleep, but it also affects your, your gaming. And uh, during this process we had, uh, there's already one published master's thesis about, about uh, esports in, in schools, and our students were studied. And what, uh, what the study found uh, was that the general well-being of the students were improved, uh, they ate healthier, they slept more, some of them even quit playing at all, uh, completely, which was not by any means the goal of this uh, program. But many of them did actually decrease the amount of uh, games they played and they become better players because of it, because they were sleeping, they were eating correctly, they were exercising at least once a week. We have training at 8 o'clock in the morning at the university gym, every Monday morning at 8 o'clock, that's when it starts. And generally speaking, everybody arrives there at 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't know about you, but I, I find it difficult to go 8 o'clock at, at Monday morning to the gym. I do it because we have this program. I participate in it, and it also helps me to get started into the week. And uh, as we also find these goals that are in, important, for example, in Finnish education, is when we have school uh, educational institutions, we have different di disciplines uh, within the school. And this means that there are certain groups, there are people who study automation or, or IT or, or some uh, game development. And these people tend to stay in their own groups. And what we also found is this interdisciplinary movement because if they have a, a joint hobby 
which is also inside the curriculum, they get a wider uh, social uh, interaction. They also changed their gaming habits in a way which was, uh, they felt that gaming was more satisfying because they had, uh, because they used to play games individually. They did play multiplayers, most of them, but they played with people, uh, with random groups of people. And when they started, they had uh, an average of three like exercise rounds, uh, exercise evenings at their own time. And they were all praying together as a, as a team. And this developed them as, a, uh, as players in the specific games. They play mostly Counter-Strike and then League of Legends and, and some single-player games. So these, uh, the whole program has a very wide impact on the students, although it's only 10 credits, so it's not, not that many hours. But the change in their general well-being is, is very, very wide. And uh, a part of this program also, we have a Counter-Strike tournament, which is now an uh, invitational Nordic championship for schools in, in Counter-Strike. Uh, this year we had 20 Finnish teams and then we had two invitational teams from Nordic countries in the, in the final. Uh, we don't know yet how large the tournament is going to be this year, but I suspect it's going to be at least twice as large. Uh, and it, it will span over several weeks because we have qualification during several, several weeks. And this also makes other implications be within the esports is because we're managing everything within the tournament. So we have people that are uh, monitoring the discussion on Twitch. We have very specific rules. We have uh, these values of respect and cooperation and teamwork are, are important. So we have a completely clean discussion in Twitch. So this is monitored by students. And the rules are very quickly understood by everybody that is, is following it. So these are also important part of the program that we we uh, we have strict values for how, how you cooperate and how you work as a team. Also, this is all administrated by students. They take all, uh, care of all the, uh, the server work, uh, all the brackets, everything. Everything is completely. It's just overseen by a few teachers that follow and basically give resources that are needed uh, because of course it, it, it does take some uh, some amounts of money to to organize these things we also uh, the tournament in itself the final is also broadcasted this is completely filmed by our own crews uh, everything we have uh, basically entire tv crew we have radio stations there so we have a media presence also, and this is all taken care of students. It's, it's minimized uh, teacher activity in it. So it's just a few, few uh, teachers that act as, as managers and, and uh, let's say, allowing more to the allocating the resources for the tournament. Some of our students actually have improved their game to such a degree that they are also semi-professional, uh, as far as I know, only on on Counter-Strike and the, the level of the final is very high. We actually had the same team winning two, two years in a row. But uh, of course, when this is growing all the time and we get more, more schools involved, the level also of the tournament in itself will begin to rise and we get more countries in the Nordic, Nordic regions to participate in the, in the finals in Helsinki. So we don't yet know, as the, we just finished the second year of having this in the curriculum, so we don't know where the, the boundaries is of how much this can expand. And the important factor here is also that we've been able to change the attitude within our own institution with people that follow this, uh, family members, uh, parents and those who look at the gaming as a negative thing. And when they see young people changing their lives in basically a very dramatic uh, way. Um, funnily enough, when, it, when we looked at this, uh, young people tended to, from my perspective, to uh, really don't see the um, immense change there is in their well-being from participating in, in uh, hello, nice to see you. Uh, participating in this program because the change in uh, 
we had also Fitbit bracelets that they used for walking and we used gamification methods to get them to, to compete in, uh, against each other in, in actually just walking. And uh, the surprising amount of the distances people were ready to walk just to have a friendly competition about who walks the longest uh, way in a week or a day or anything. And this is what everything is done in a very, very, very good spirit. And, and uh, the, fear, uh, the sense in this whole event also, in the, the culmination in the tournament, is that everybody's working very hard. It's uh, on the last day, I'd say there's 30 people because we have a VIP lounge, we have the editing rooms, we have the admins, we have uh, people are arranging everything. And this is also because what we all need in life is this sense of participation. And when it becomes from a thing in an educational institution for something that's very important for, for people. And nowadays it is gaming. This is, it's one of the biggest things. We do have a football team too and a floorball team, but it's actually more, uh, diff becoming more difficult to get a, a running team or something collected within an educational institution because there's just not enough people to collect and have a team. So having this in a good spirited manner, having these tournaments and, and so on, and we're constantly developing this uh, together with, with uh, now it's going to be the University of Helsinki and Turku is, is going to be involved. We have some other schools uh, that are also arranging tournaments now during the coming school year. So this is expanding very rapidly and it's noticed in the media also. And to my surprise, a lot of the response first seemed to be on the negative side, but now people are getting used to this, that, that it is actually a spectator sport. And, and it does seem funny when we have the tournament and people who traditionally wouldn't look at eSports, I mean, really, I'm not trying to stereotype, but, but other teachers that have never looked at it and never considered gaming as, as anything other than a waste of time, they sit there and they can cheer uh, at their students or not, even not being their students and they find, find value in this coming together uh, in, in something that would seem to them completely menial. Uh, also about the the, the, the role we take in, in general is also that we're not advocating gaming. We're advocating a balanced life. And by advocating a balanced way of life and improving people's gaming, improving their uh, life management, they are improving their studies, they are improving their relationships, they're improving their games. As a, it becomes... Uh, a more balanced, unified person because of this. And what we do as the educational institution, that we give them sort of the, a ground where they can be met as equals in regards to the, something that is very important for them. And when, the, when, when you meet young people with respect in regards to what their interests are, they also meet you in respect with what they, uh, what we want to convey them in the studies they, they have in their general curriculum. So I, uh, I don't know currently how large group we are going to have next year. This year we had 30 students and, and from our school and I know there's some programs uh, coming up in Finnish schools all around Finland. So this thing is growing very rapidly because we can see the value and as we find and have academic research as a proof of that this concept actually works and it's helping the students on many levels, it's not about gaming. That's the first question everybody asks us, are they playing video games? And no, they're not, they haven't played a single minute outside the tournament, of course, then they play the tournament inside the school. But everything else, the actual gaming is happening outside the at Saudi school. So we have basically a team of three, three persons. We have actually a, fi, a, a PE teacher uh, who teaches, who takes care of the, the gym training and so on. We have nutritionists that come and help and talk. We have 
Uh, we had a uh, child and youth psychiatrist who's a uh, gamer themselves, had a lecture for our students. So we're looking at it from different angles so they can find the way to become better players, to become better students and everything. And the results of, uh, of from any perspective taken been been very, very positive. Uh, but so I won't keep on rambling. I suppose I can take questions, right? Yes, so Tia has a microphone and I uh, can't see anybody. Someone please raise their hand or I'll keep on rambling, you know. Laura, be nice and ask me a question. <laughs> She's on the phone. I just caught her off guard. Anybody have any questions? Oh, this is Finland. It's so typical. Sorry about this. <laughs> no. But in general, I, one of the reasons I'm here also is that I would like to invite any interested other educational institutions to come and uh, talk with me or, or other representatives in our school because this is a thing that can be done in a very positive way and developed in a, such a manner that it comes uh, uh, develops in a healthy way that we can share our experiences to other schools that they can also take part not in only in the tournaments but the positive effects that that these this program has also has had on our students and by no means is there are these things that are uh, directly connected to a certain video games it, it, it is all about the mentality of that we as the educational institution are present for the student and we have the patience for them to listen and to observe and see where this thing can go because of course I do play counter-strike with with some of the students sometimes and you can guess by my age my reflexes are no way close to them but they have patience with me being a poor gamer and uh, maybe I'll have patience with them in other situations. Uh, and if, any, if there's any free uh, Counter-Strike tables, I'm, I'm happy to play against any one of you too. So, but uh, I think I'm finished, but still questions. A quiet quite shy bunch nobody okay but I thank for my part and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the assembly thank you